Hey Busy Crafters, welcome back to my channel. This will be the last DIY for fall for this season, of course, until next year. Um, we're starting off with doing sublimation again. I have really gotten into sublimation and I really love doing sublimation. I do tumblers, I do glass cans, I do all that stuff. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually trying to show you guys how I do it from Word document to my Epson printer. Unfortunately, you can't see it, so everything will be down in the description. I have an Epson EcoTank 2800. It's a ET2800. It was converted. And instead of using the ink that came with the printer, I just use Hippo ink. And I haven't had an issue with it, except for yesterday it did dry up a little bit. But other than that, um, it just needed cleaning. But it's not too bad, and it's been doing wonderful. Um, so now I'm going ahead and printing off the images. This is going to be a double-sided um DIY. So that's one of them. That pumpkin that I got from the Dollar Tree. And there's the two um, sublimation prints that I'm going to be using for this project. I got that pumpkin from the Dollar Tree, of course, $1.25. And I used my heat gun to take the cardboard off of it. Um, it was just cardboard. And it kind of looked weird to me. Like the word, the lettering were separated on that Hello Pumpkin part. It just, so I thought I could do better. And I think it turned out way better. So um, it took me a while to get this paper off. So after many moons and a lot of tears, I finally got the paper off. Um, no, nah, just kidding. But it did take a long time. And I ended up having to soak it down with a little bit of water and then dry it with a heat gun. But before I dried it, I took some goo gone and got the, uh, the rest of the glue off of it. So then I went ahead and painted both sides, top and bottom, and everything with my folk art, I believe that's the folk art. Yeah, that's the folk art um, chalk paint in white. Sublimation comes really good on white. Um, any other color I find it just drowns it out and you really can't see the sublimation. So the white is what really makes the sublimation ink pop. And so now I'm just going ahead and I noticed with this chalk paint, if you like put a thick coat on it and then you heat it up, like get the gun really close to it without actually touching it, it starts to crack so it looks weathered. So now we're going to be using lamination, laminated sheets. They come in a little pouch so you can just tear them apart. Um, shiny side goes up, dull side goes down. And you got to heat it up for 365 degrees for 30 seconds. And wait till it completely dries or cools, not dries. Wait till it completely cools down before you start cutting away from it. There was a little bit of bubbles in there. So I had to use my Cricut little squeegee thing to uh, get all the bubbles out. So right there, I'm cutting down the images. I got these images off of Creative Fabrica. Um, they Creative Fabrica a long time ago it used to be almost $400 a year. They have since dropped drastically. Um, I think I'm only paying like $60 a year now. And so if you can, go over and look at Creative Fabrica. Um, so many different images and so many different things that you could do on that website. So uh, just go over there and check them out. I was so happy when I seen that they dropped their price for yearly subscription drastically. So uh, yeah, so I'm just cutting it down to the size that I need. Um, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the plastic away from the pumpkin. Right now I'm just getting a majority of it away and then I'll go back and clean it up a little bit better. And I'm doing that for both sides. So now I'm gonna stick the, I'm measuring out where the image is gonna be. And I just cut the little pumpkin shape. With the image, um, I tape it down with heat resistant tape that I also got from Amazon. Um, a lot of it came with, I bought a package, but I did not realize that when I bought my tumblers to sublimate on, it also came with a bunch of tape. So I have a bunch of heat transfer or a heat uh, resistant tape. So I just make sure that it is completely down and tight. And now we're going ahead and 385 for 60 seconds on this one. And I'm going to do both sides. I don't think I'm going to show you both sides of me actually, you know, doing this. Let's all just watch the machine. <laughs> okay, there we go. And 
it would be better if you waited a few minutes just to take it off because I'm hearing that the ink, when it's heated up, is uh, toxic. I guess. I don't know. I've never had an issue with it. But a lot of people are saying that it's toxic and be in a well-ventilated area. Um, so I just took it off right away. There was no issue. I mean, the only thing is the machine kind of has a smell to it because, of course, it's hot, you know. So that was the first image, and then this is the second image. And I just think it turned out so cute. My daughter-in-law came over and says, oh, I like that. So I don't think she realized that I actually made it. Maybe she did, maybe she didn't, I don't know. She knows I'm into making stuff. So uh, now I'm actually cleaning up the sides. I wait till it cools down completely. I was impatient and did not do that. And so there was a little bit of peeling up in the corner. So I just had to hot glue it down a little bit. If I wasn't impatient and actually waited, then I would not have had a problem with it because I haven't had problems with it with other stuff. Like I made coasters with this stuff. I sublimated coasters with using wood and everything and never had a problem with it. So, uh, yeah, now we're just going to clean up both sides. And there's the two images. Um, you can sublimate right on the paint without using a laminate sheet, but it does not, it turns out very dull. And so I like that pop of color. So now I just went ahead and took this ribbon that I actually got in the springtime, but it had a lot of the fall colors and then pops of blue in it, which was, you know, adorable. Um, I really like the blue, the blues and the grays for fall all of a sudden. Um, most of my decorations right now are orange and burgundy and stuff. But every once in a while, I like to put a little pop of color in there. I love color. My house has all the different rooms have different colors to them. And it flows really nicely. Um... So yeah, I'm just going to take this ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree um, in the springtime, but I felt like it could be more fall than spring. And that's where I had to glue down the corner because I was impatient. But um, yeah, I just went around all the way around the pumpkin and it gave it that finished look. And I didn't go all the way up to the, the peduncle only because I was going to wrap it in twine anyways. So here's where the twine comes in. I got that from Walmart. I'm still using it. I think it was like $5.38 or something like that. It was pretty cheap for the amount that you get, but it's not cheaply made. It's very good twine for the price and like it's just very good twine, you know, so thank you Walmart. And then I'm just going to go ahead and go all the way up the peduncle and we're going to continue watching, you know. So, <laughs> boring. No, I'm kidding. Um, I hope these I hope these videos ain't boring to you guys. I I hope you guys like, subscribe, you know, share. Um, I really appreciate my subscribers. Thank you so much. It really helps out my channel, and it really helps uh, me to let YouTube know that people are liking my content. Um, also, if there's anything that you see that I could be doing different or easier, please let me know. You know, work harder or no, 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 don't work harder. Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> well, you can work harder if you want. It makes you feel like something, you know, you got accomplished. That's how I feel sometimes. If you work a little bit harder, I feel like you accomplished something. I don't know. So now I'm making a little shoestring bow out of the same ribbon that I, um, put around the, uh, pumpkin. And I do it for both sides because, you know, once again, this is this is sitting on my coffee table. So you're going to be able to see both sides. And then when I get tired of the one side, then I just turn around and look at the other side for a little bit. Makes me happy. And now I am those jewels we got from Michaels years and years and years ago. They don't sell them anymore. I can't find them anywhere. So thank goodness I bought a whole bunch. But I put little blue gems on either side of it. Because that just brought out the the gen, or the blue in the ribbon. And there it is. I got that little spin table thingy for my tumblers from Amazon for less than 10 bucks. So on to DIY number two. I started out by getting these easels from the Dollar Tree. Um, once again, we're doing sublimation. You can sublimate on them really good. Um, these ones turned out a not as dark as I wanted. And that's because I didn't put the pressure on the press um, it is heavy or is hard. 
So it was like a medium. It should have been a little bit tighter and then it would have been fine. Um, I used these before. You don't need laminate sheets for this because it's already coated with something that sublimates easily and perfectly. I did make um, one of these um, for my mom and it was a different picture. It wasn't, it wasn't a fall, but it was Jesus and it turned out beautiful. And so I was like, hey, why not try it for the fall? Um, with my mom's, I pressed it a little bit harder and it, that's why it turned out gorgeous. And this one I did not. So always make sure you have something on top when you do sublimation because you don't want the ink to come through and hit the, the heating part and get ink on it because then your other future projects could be messed up. Um, so now I have my heat gloves on because once again, I'm also impatient. And there you go. There's the truck with the pumpkins and then we have a tractor with the pumpkins. So this is like a farmhouse as well, but fall. My house is not a farmhouse. My house is whatever we like, we put in it and it just comes together and flows nicely actually. There's no real theme to anything. So we've had compliments on the house because I guess it's unusual. <laughs> but um, now I'm going ahead and getting the ribbon that I used for the last project in the pumpkin and I'm putting it around the bottom because even though they're nice the way they were, they, they needed something else. You know, you always have to go a little extra, you know, it looks nice. You can make it nicer, add something extra. And that's what I did. So those I actually got off of another project from Hobby Lobby or not Hobby Lobby. No, no, no. Dollar Tree. And I just added the little raffia bow and one has a little blue gem and the other one has an orange gem. And there's the end product. I did paint the legs in the back, as you've seen before, but there's the end product, and there you go. So thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day. Bye.